So that's one, we just need 50 more. <laughs> Hi, this is Ariel. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we make fun costumes and weird stuff. If I manage my schedule correctly, I should be publishing this on Valentine's Day. Ça? We're going to dive in the world of crafty fashion and do something a little bit naughty, a little bit nice, and a whole lot of pink and shiny. It starts with these boots that I got a while ago. I've been wanting for a while to create something cool to go with it. I got them in the night district in Paris, you know, right by the Moulin Rouge. And I did not wear them yet because I was kind of afraid to twist my ankle. But I really love them. They kind of remind me of those plastic Barbie shoes. Almost cartoonish and I like them. I'm so excited about the upcoming Barbie movie. I have so much hope for this. <laughs> so, with Valentine's Day just around the corner. What better way to spice things up but create a shiny pink harness. I've seen plenty of these cool and fashionable harnesses all around the internet so I want to try to make one for me but in pink. I don't know why but currently everything I want to make is pink. Mm. So grab your sewing supplies and your hammer, you'll see. And let's make a top that will turn heads and make your sweetheart's heart skip a bit. <laughs> okay let's go. <laughs> We start off with this bright, shiny faux leather and a thick cotton canvas to match it. All the hardware that I have in gold. And some buckles. I only found some bronze. I think gold would have been better, but this would be fine. Before cutting the vinyl, let's make some sort of mock-up. For this, I'm using a cotton, some scraps from previous projects. I saw a lot of different designs possible for this harness, so I'm just placing the hardware and the strips on the mannequin to see how much I like it. Asking Instagram for help as well. As I was looking at the fabric that I'm going to use for this, I remembered that I had this. It's a thread curtain, but it is exactly the same color as this. I think I should find some way to use it in the look. I'll make two different widths of strips. And in my opinion, the easy way to do the binding of the edge and also hiding the white backing is to make a tube with the back bigger than the front. And when you turn the tube inside out, you get a clean back and clean edges at the same time. We need a bunch of those. So we are cutting a strip of vinyl over a bigger strip of cotton. Sew it on one side and the other while the piece is a bit folded. We need the cotton to be able to fold twice on the edge. And we need a lot of these tubes. And then we have to turn them all inside out. My favorite way of doing this is using this giant safety pin that you can pull through the tube. All the tubes need to be ironed very flat. And then you can put them through the hardware. We need to be careful with this because the vinyl, it keeps the marks of the pins, but not the cotton. So it's good that I can pin everything in place and see how much I like it and adjust the length without damaging the shiny vinyl. You can also use clips for this step. I have more than enough strips, so I can tweak the design as I'm doing it to make it more to my taste, which is questionable, I know. The two lower strips will actually be belts, but I'm realizing that I need to add some hooks to be actually be able to put it on, which is fine. It's an excuse to add more cool hardware. Now I can carefully try it on. Uh, I did hurt myself a lot during this step because everything is holding on with pins. I can adjust everything and mark the holes of the belts. And now we can secure everything more permanently. With a leather harness, this step will be much easier. But since I have raw edges of fabric, I have to fold everything and sew it in place. I want to avoid any unraveling of the fabric. And of course, if I want it to be invisible from the outside, I have to do this by hand. Kind of regretting all the strips now. And with every strip, I'm measuring it to make sure that it is symmetrical on both sides. The pin of the buckle needs to go through the fabric. So I'm just poking a hole with an owl. Owl. 
This will not be visible when the belt is closed. Then to hold the belts in place, I'm making sure that the bottom strips are doubled and the two belts can go through. I have sewn all the ends of the strips, but now to make them actually secure, I want to use rivets. They would have been better in gold, but I only have bronze. Should be fine. But is there enough? These rivets will actually be the thing that keeps the whole thing together. The stitching was just to secure the edges of the fabric. This is my favorite part because I get to use a hammer and this shoemaker anvil that I thrifted for five euros. To minimize the noise of the anvil, you can put it on something soft like fabric or a cushion so the sound doesn't propagate too much, especially on the wooden table. So that's one, we just need 50 more. <laughs> I'm using an owl again to first make the hole, because if I were to cut them out, it would make the fabric a bit weaker. These rivets are really easy to set, I love using them. Also, I'm measuring the placement every time to make sure that they are the same distance. Makes the whole thing more cohesive, in my opinion. The belts, they need a hole too to work. I really thought I had some bronze eyelets, but unfortunately I only have silver, which is a bit disappointing because the bronze is fine, but the silver, it's kind of... Mm. So even though I had planned on making a lot of eyelets for decoration, I will be only making one. I'm sewing the ends of the belts to make them all neat. And with that, the top part is finished. Let's take a little break. to the workshop. Let's add some pockets, but make them cute. With all the little loops, I have a lot of places that I can hang stuff. So let's make some detachable pouches that I can hang anywhere or maybe wear on their own. And make it look like a heart, because that's kind of the theme here. I make a little heart as big as I think would look good with the harness and add one centimeter of seam allowance. The, zi the zipper, the zipper strip part should be as big as the circumference of the heart. So I'm sandwiching the zipper between the shiny and the lining with an added row of stitching for strength and to make it flat. I'm making sure it's the right size. And for the pouch to be a little bit puffy, I'm adding some batting. This should make the heart keep its shape. The lining is the same size and the batting is kept in place with a row of stitching inside the seam allowance. Using some clips to not leave any marks into the vinyl, the three pieces are attached together. It is a bit tricky because the vinyl kind of fights back, but I need to follow the hard shape perfectly, otherwise the whole thing will look a bit uh, wonky. A million clips are useful here. making sure that everything is heavily clipped before turning it inside out. And we can add the lining. Oh, I mean uh, hardware first. I have leftover strips, so I'm putting one through some hook, securing the ends with some hand stitching, and then we can rivet it in place. And also the dip in the heart needs a little bit of adjustment to make sure that it is visible and the whole thing looks like a heart. Otherwise, it will be a fail. I would have failed. <laughs> Anyways, the lining can be folded in the right shape. Pinned and 
and sewn by hand. I don't know about you, but closing linings by hand and like closing bias tape is my favorite thing. Don't know why. So this is almost done. I just need to make the lining, but I realized that it doesn't fit my phone. But since the harness has other little hooks, I can add another little pouch like this, but it can fit my phone and I can maybe wear it on its own. There's still fabric left over, so I can try this one. Oh, I kind of look like a witch. <laughs> but let's finish the heart first. And also maybe we can change the zipper handle to something cute. I'm sure I have something in there. I'm excited about the second pocket because this will be kind of a bag that I can wear on its own and it's super simple to make. There is the front, the back, the flap and the little straps. I'm cutting some bias for the edges in the same pink fabric as the lining. This sandwich consists of back, back batting, back lining, front lining, front batting, front, flap lining, flap batting, flap front and all this bound with the bias. I basted the main components with a row of stitching on the outside of the seam allowance, so it will not be visible. Then you can bind the pieces on their own. I sew the bias once with the machine, then fold it on the inside and close it by hand. With this piece cut on the bias of the fabric, it should not make any creases or any little folds. It's all neat and flat. I don't really like those angular corners, I'm going to make them more rounded. Using the clips here again, because the pins, remember, they leave a mark on this vinyl. Same as before, the bias is folded and sewn by hand. Slightly trickier to sew since it's in the shiny vinyl, but it's still not too hard. Then I can add two hooks on the top, that way I can attach it to the harness. Same as before, they are made from the extra straps and I add some rivets. We can attach the flap and bind this edge. The phone is protected and it can be worn on its own. I really like this. So now it is time to style this weird item of clothing and it was not an easy task. Fortunately, I have advice from the people on Instagram. You can follow me there if you want a lot more costumes and some questionable fashion. Anyways, the results really gave some cyberpunk vibes and that got me excited for the reveal because I like to try new stuff with my editing software. Enjoy, subscribe, bisous! Thank you.